Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. For today's midweek meta deck, we are playing Elf Kids deck from the Legacy Challenge Showcase where they split the finals. Uh, so this is one of the sort of two winning decks. I decided to play this one because the other one was a Yorion Zenith deck. And I played that last week or the week before, so I thought I'd try something a bit different. Now this is the um, whole day deck, which I've not been very impressed by when I've been playing against it. I've lost to it a few times. Um, I've also seen other people playing it as well. And I'm more than happy to be proved wrong, so maybe this is where you want to be. I can certainly see how it has some powerful matchups to go along with. So let's get into what the deck does. So essentially we're trying to have either a Hull Breacher or a Narset Part of in play, and then we're going to cast Days Undoing or Echo of Eons off of a Lion's Eye Diamond to put it in our graveyard. That's pretty much what we're trying to do. That's our combo, it refills our hand, and then eventually we're going to win either with little Hull Breacher beats or using our Khan package. So we're a combo deck that just wants to get our opponent without resources. We've got a little bit of protection to do that. So we have a couple of Chance of the Void to disrupt our opponent alongside a full playset of Force of Will. We've got loads of fast mana so we can try and do our broken thing as soon as possible. Obviously Narset is very useful for digging four twice to find the other half of the combo. So it's a relatively streamlined deck. I can, I can certainly see the power on it. We also have these four Ezra Saga if we have to shift into an Ezra Saga beatdown plan which is quite effective. We have a whole bunch of artifacts, so it will be relatively large in size. Because of our mana requirements in this deck, we're actually able to fit in three Ottawaras here, which is quite nice to me. This is a, a powerful card that we can flex from a land spot. Mana base wise, we've also got four Ancient Tombs and four Saprazan Scary. If you're unfamiliar with this one, it's a land that comes to play tapped and taps for blue-blue, but you only get to tap it twice before it goes away. So hopefully the idea is that Getting two mana for it twice is more than enough to win the game with because we do our combo thing. We have four Seagate Restoration, mainly for pitching to Chromox, but sometimes we might get in a situation where we cast this. But for the most part, it is just a, a land that can also pitch to Chromox, so it kind of does double duty that way. You see things like this all the time in sort of white initiative decks too. And we've also got a uh, Pith Needle and Ether Spellbomb as part of our Urza Saga package. And that's it for the main deck. But because we have Khan, the cyborg and the main deck are a lot closer than you would expect. So this is basically our main deck part two. So we have a Lion's Eye Diamond, which we can fetch off the Khan to do our Echo of Eon shenanigans. We have two Tormoz Crypts. So this is, gives us the ability to play the Khan and immediately get Graveyard Hate that we can use. We have an Ensnaring Bridge in case we need to turtle up. Defense Grids. So we can board these in, we can also play them. So if our opponent is just trying to control us and can't counter spell what we're doing, the defense grid can stop doing that. So quite often we're going to be boarding these in and maybe boarding out Force of Wheels, I imagine. But we'll see when we get there and see how it feels. We obviously have the Nuxent Lattice for the Lattice Lock. Liquid Metal Coating for the Khan slowly strip mine them out of the game plan. We have an Engine Explosives in case there's something like a Chalice on the other side that we need to blow up so we can play all of our zeros or whatever. Or, you know, there's various things that Engine Explosives will destroy. Sky Sovereign is a piece of removal that can also be a win condition. And then we've got four copies of Force of Negation for other combo decks where we need to just say, no, you can't win the game. We need to be the control. And that's pretty much it. So Legacy Challenge Showcase is a very difficult tournament to win. So Elfkid did a great job with winning with this deck and I'm quite excited to give it a go. I haven't played these decks really before. So it'd be interesting to see how we fare. All right, before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe once you finish watching. And why not check out my Patreon in the link below. I've just posted a new article about Rainbow Depths and about how you can optimize building for it and some of the pitfalls people fall into when trying to build it. So I think it's well worth a read. It's on my tier with my Green Black Turbo Depths Primer as well. It's the 2020 Specialist tier, so why not check that out? And why not become a member of the Discord and just come and hang out and chat about stuff and tell me what you want to see, what you like, etc. All right, let's play a league with Elf Kids' top two slash winning Legacy Challenge Showcase deck. All right, this is our opening hand. We're on the draw. We clearly need more land, so we're going to mulligan this one. We can take a trip down to wheel town is that where we want to be like we can wheel with a bunch of stuff i guess we'll keep this one uh, i think we'll put back the days i'm doing now this could be a mistake to wheel this with no lands because we might not resolve our echo eons mountain goblin guide okay we're going to resolve our echo eons 
But we probably want to Chalice of the Void first, because that's going to be a thing that does... Our opponent's going to be able to draw a lot of cards from our own Echo that might be able to blow us up. Mox 4. Alright, this is good. Play out a Petal. Another Petal. A Mox. Lion's Eye Diamond. Cast this for one. That should be pretty good against the Burn deck. We'll crack this for triple blue. Let's take a spin. Hmm. What do I want to do here? If we play the scary, we can play Khan next turn. Which is pretty good. Sure, I'll play the scary here. We've got a Force of Will if we need it. This isn't so much a game where we need to make our opponent not have resources necessarily. I think we might want to... Like we don't need to execute our full A plus B combo here. We just need to drop these chalices and hope they're good enough, I think. If we put chalice on two, that might be better. Rolling Vortex. Okay. So for Lion's Eye Diamond. We've Khan the Great Creator. Got the Ottawara. we got a lot of options here. So we could just play a chalice on two. One, two, three, four mana for that. Or use our Saga. I don't hate that. Chalice on 2 doesn't shut down any of our stuff either. So I think we're going to do this. So we can go remove two counters here, remove, play this, play this, put Chalice on 2. So the question is, do you want to try and wheel again here? Uh, what are we looking for? I think we'll jam this Lion's Eye Diamond. Oh, yeah, this takes 5 damage from us, doesn't it? Oh dear. Whoops. Okay, that was an error. So we could wheel here, but we don't really want to play our zeros yet. We need to bounce this with an Ottawara first. Yeah, I made a mistake there. It's going to cost us five health. Now, I don't think it's necessarily going to matter here. But I was a bit loose. So Fire Blast is the thing we're basically trying to dodge here. They can cast things like right, um, Rift Bolt. That costs three mana. Rift Bolt, there we go. So if we Force of Will this, we will take five instead of three. So we have to just take this. Not ideal for us. Fire Blast. Well, that's going to put us to one. And we're going to die because we played out the Lion's Eye Diamond. We can't play this. We can't use our Lion's Eye Diamond for mana for the Ottawara because we have to discard our hand as part of the cost. So we are just dead here, actually. Whoops. That was a bit of a pump from our side there. Well, we still might not win if we shut them off there. But, yeah, not ideal, that one. So what do we want for this matchup? I don't think we care about defense grids here. Force of negations are kind of interesting to me. Well, we just want to go pretty hard here and do our thing. Force of negation for stuff like Roiling Vortex is going to be useful though. We don't really want to be wheeling unless we can guarantee that our opponent is not going to kill us with the cards they have in hand. Khan is a bit slow, but we need a way that can actually win the game relatively quickly. Quickly, Pith Needle is not going to help, so we can get... Enforced to get you that. Ether Spellbomb is kind of okay. Gives us a little bit of interaction. But is that what this game is really about? We're probably just going to turtle up behind a Khan. But I like having this as a thing that we can find. Chalice is much stronger than the Force of Negation here. We'll trim one of these. Do we have a way to fit two more Force of Negations in this deck? We need these stuff to go fast. So I don't really want to trim from there. We need the payoff here. If they're bringing Graveyard Hate, maybe we need one less Echo. Because Lion's Eye Diamond still works quite nicely with Khan. Alright, let's try that. Yeah, we definitely made a mistake in that first one. Do I think Urza Saga being active with all these Ancient Tombs is where I want to be? No. Um, now this Urza Saga plan is something I can get behind a little more. Maybe we can keep this and get rid of... Maybe it's the Lotus Petal. That does pump our guy. Maybe it's the second saga, but the saga is kind of the thing we're trying to accomplish in this game. I think. Let's get rid of the petal. So our plan is to play as a sagas that are big enough to win the game and stop our opponent's creature plan. All right, a goblin guide. How much damage does this represent over the course of the game? Uh, so this is going to do two damage. Then it's going to do four damage. So this is going to be six damage in total. So I think we will counter this. Let's have a saga. We do have to watch out for price of progress. But next turn we can make a Saga Construct, then we can make another Saga Construct, and so on and so forth. And hopefully that's enough to beat our opponent down with. Chain Lightning, sure. Uh, we will not pay Red Red because we don't have Red Red. Probably have an instant speed burn spell of some description. So we can play this Mox 
paper out. So when we make this creature, it will be a 2-2. Two, two. If we play this out, it will be a 3-3. Three, three. So it's kind of the same either way. Do we need this Ottawara in play? Or do we need this in hand? If we play this, the next turn we can make a construct from it as well. So I think that makes sense to me. Our Sacrosan Scary is going to die relatively quickly here. Because we're going to be putting stuff here. So having all these disappearing lands isn't actually the worst against the Price of Progress deck. 13. Eidolon. We don't really care about the Eidolon. It does stop us playing this Chromox. But that's fine. All right, we just make this token now. Save ourselves a little bit of time. Clicking through. Right. I would like to have a... Uh, I'd like to have a Shadow Spear in our deck. But we don't actually have one here. Uh, what is important for us here? Either Spellbomb seems useful. This ticks up. And we'll play out this Ottawara. We'll go to attacks here. If they don't block, we'll pump it. Alright, so we hit them for 5. Then we have lethal next turn. Anything they play will hurt them. They've got 13 life to deal to us. Which is a lot off of 3 to 4 mana. Especially when they're idle and can't attack. 6 life we save by hitting the Goblin Guard on turn 1. Feels like it's going to be the difference here. Alright, so we got there with the Ezra Saga plan. What do you want to do differently this time around? Uh, I don't think anything. I think we just resubmit. Our deck is pretty powerful for what it's trying to do. So, I would quite like to have access to Chalice. Hmm. This is a turn one hold breacher. But then where are we going? It's kind of the problem here. I think we need to mulligan. Uh, it's kind of similar, but not great. Let's mulligan again. Okay, okay. We can keep this. Don't think we want the days on doing, although it is a blue card that we can pitch. We just have two pitch spells, but we got to get rid of two cards here. So we're going to keep the scary and the saga. So maybe get rid of the days on doing and get rid of get rid of the snow covered iron in the hope that we can just draw snow uh, draw a mana source soon. That means any blue card gives us more interaction. Sure, we're on the draw. I think this makes sense. Monastery Swift Spear. This is not as powerful as Goblin Guy, so I don't mind this one sticking. I would rather stop the thing that's going to do more damage to us. Let's play out the Scary. So next time we can play Saga and play Narsa, and they're going to have a choice of whether they deal with the Narsa or not. Roiling Vortex. Uh, we will. Counterspell this. Pitching. I think it probably is the Force here, sadly. So I'm going to get two life in again, in us here. Put this one out. We could play a Khan out now. I think that's where I want to be. I'm going to play this one out to get ahead of like Rolling Vortex type stuff. I think I would rather Nars it here. Because we can threaten something really unpleasant for our opponent here. And force some damage onto our Nars it here. Echo the Ons, Khan the Great Creator. Hmm... Not really a fan of these cards. But we can get the Khan and then Echo with Narset in play. So if they don't kill the Narset, we can get them with the combo next turn and empty their hand and give us a full grip. <clears throat> Let's see. They might spend a bolt on this, which in that case has saved us three life. When the Saga eventually pops, we'll get a Lion's Eye Diamond anyway. Another Rolling Vortex or like a, an Eidolon would be pretty annoying here. I think they're going to be questioning what they're doing against our Narset. Okay. Have they got a lightning bolt for our Narset? And then they can get in for a bit of damage here. Where are these coming at? They're ignoring the Narset. Okay. If they leave up a red mana, it means they might be threatening a bolt in response to us trying to combo. Which means we can't do it. Okay. Skewer the critics. Where is this going? This is going at the Narset. Okay. So we saved ourselves three damage. And now we can blunt their aggro with our Saga here. We could jam another Narset. If we jam another Narset, next turn we get to Echo. Is that good enough? Like next turn we can Khan and Snaring Bridge anyway. If we don't scary this turn. How important is having a 2-2 guy going to be for us? It'll be a 2-2 and then a 3-3. And then this will get us a mana source. Well, this is tricky. I think we're supposed to get the saga token going this turn 
certainly feeling the temporary nature of the sap percent scary, although it did accelerate us out. So it's not as if we haven't benefited from it. Let's get the saga going. I'm going to bolt our guy in response. So what we're looking to next turn is draw a blue source. So we can cast this Narset, use the Lines of Diamonds, and then Echo Vions, getting rid of their hand. That's kind of the plan for next turn. Smash to smithereens. Yep, it's pretty good. Let's take three, four, five, six, seven this turn. It's a lot. And they are holding up red for something like a Pyroblast that can be us. A Fire Blast. All right. So they're going to bash us for six down to two here. Have they got a burn spell? Skewer the critics or something to finish us off? Chalice of the Void. That's not one of the sources we were after. Like, casting an Echo Vions here is suicidal. Now, we're definitely floating. Jeez. We need to be able to deal with what's in play right now. Like, we can either spell on one of these guys out, but then they can... If any spell kills us. Um, I think we are just on having to potentially murder ourselves here. Just trying to work out if we play the chalice right now and then we just wheel naked, is that fine? Or do we need the mana? What are we trying to do with the mana? If we can get enough mana going we might be able to con. But Snow Bridge isn't going to do it for us. Yeah, we need to try a Hail Mary here. This is probably going to end badly for us. Okay. Two Lion's Eye Diamonds is a lot of Lion's Eye Diamonds. We haven't played a land yet. The best we can get off of a land is tapping for blue. So I think we play this out. We can't force a will to stop what our opponent's doing right now either. If they have a bolt in hand, we just die to it. But we don't really have the choice to play around anything here. I think we want these lines our diamonds back in our deck, so we're going to go for it here. Bolt from our opponent, and we die. No bolt. Okay. We're kind of getting there. So if we cast this, then we can dig a little deeper. Days Undoing, Chrome Mox. Chrome Mox, what does that do for us here? Problem with Days Undoing here is that it ends our turn for us. We could bounce both of their guys, but we're almost certainly going to have another mana source. Um, if we Days Undoing into Hull Breacher, we might be able to block and then have counter spells up. Or we can play this Chalice. Got one mana floating. Two, three, four, five. So Chalice takes down to three. Two, one for this and, and bounce it. And we're holding up a counter spell, but they can cast a spell into the Chalice. So that's not actually going to work for us. We're going to have to days on doing, I think. So that's one, two, three mana. And then we have four mana here. Oh, this is tough. Um, I think we get the spell bomb here. Then we play out a petal. Play out a petal. And then we play out this spell bomb. One, two, three, four. So then we need to cast a day's undoing. One two three so our plan here is bounce one of the swift spears hope our opponent doesn't find a spell any spell kills us here yep that'll do oh that's tough yeah i think our mistake in the first game might have cost us our opponent might still have won that game but i think we did throw it away a little bit there due to my unfamiliarity of playing with this deck and my unfamiliarity of playing against roiling vortex all right we're own one, but there were some pretty interesting games, and we we had a shot there. If they'd have hit a mountain that turn, then we can probably turtle up behind Chalice, bouncing their guys and stuff. So, or you know, they've got the Khan kicking in as well. We were close though. All right, let's go to round two. We're on the play, which is definitely one of the places we'd like to be. Uh, what does our hand do? It makes a turn three Khan or a turn three Narset. Possibly a turn two. Oh no, it's a turn two Narset, right? We can play this and this and have the. Is a turn two Narset good enough with a Force of Will? I think so. We can lead out with a Snow Covered Island as well to keep ourselves covered. We don't really want to play this Chrome Mox out. It does risk getting hit by something like a Discard spell. That's not really what this is about right now. Verdant Catacombs. 
Unmask. Targeting us. Okay. What are we losing here? The Force of Will. Feels like we're just getting reanimated here. Dark Ritual. Oh, they got the full shebang. Entomb. Yep. Exeon. They have a Grizzlebrand. How many more cards are they going to take from our hand, I wonder? Grief. Yep. So we're losing another one. What are the Exile? Just standard stuff so far. Nothing unusual. Goodbye, Narset. If we can top deck a an ensnaring bridge and our opponent doesn't discard us this turn again, then we can deploy the Khan and the ensnaring bridge. Alright, we don't get to do that anymore. We probably lose the Khan here. Could be the Mox though. Okay. Feels like our reasonable hand has become bad. So uh, there are versions of this uh, holiday deck that run four chalice instead of two. And that certainly feels like it would be uh, better for us in this matchup at the very least. And in the previous matchup. This might also be part of the difference between playing a game in a Legacy League versus the Challenge Showcase, which is a different meta. What have we got? Yeah, I think we can call it a day there. Yeah, our opponent turn one us. It happens. Okay, I would like these Force of Negations. I would then like one Tormont's Crypt, I think. Have one in the main and one in the board. That maximizes our chances of having them. I think having the Snare Bridge in the sideboard still makes the most sense. But now I have to work out what five cards come out for these. So, Days I'm doing. And Echo Beyonds both shuffle their graveyards in, so that's actually pretty handy for us. I guess these tools are useful-ish, but we're better off just having counter spells and graveyard hate. So I think we'll put those in. Are we trimming on some of our combo-y type stuff? I quite like the idea of just cycling our opponent into a hand when their deck requires specific bits. I really don't know how to cyborg with this deck, as you can probably tell. Holbridge was a creature they can reanimate, so that's less of a thing that I'm interested in having here. Maybe we're just trimming down on some of our combo pieces. So Days I'm Doing is the weaker one. Okay, the Diamond, is that right? Or just another Days I'm Doing. Sure, we'll try it like this. Again, I've never played this deck before, so my starboarding could be way out. Okay, our hand doesn't really do much apart from have these Force of Negations. Which is alright. Um, I think we can keep on the strength of these Force of Negations. Okay, Seagate Restoration tapped. And pass the turn. So we have double Force of Negation. So we can beat a discard spell. Can't beat two though. Dark Ritual. Because we can beat a discard spell, I think I'm going to let this one hit. Thoughtseize, sure. So they can't Entomb Reanimate now because they know we have a backup force. So they probably take one of the forces. We can find a Mana Source, we can deploy the Narset. And if that finds us a, an LED, then we're off in a big way there. Right, we took the Force. They might just have more discards to throw at us, but I have to imagine two of the cards in their hand are Reanimation Spell and Entomb if they're doing this Dark Ritual line. Otherwise, you just lead out on Thought Seize and then do that on the following turn. This means that their mana might burn off now because they might be reluctant. So they're targeting themselves with Unmask. Sure. Are they going for it here? They are. So we will exile this. And I think we're going to pitch the Echo. The Nars is going to be better to help us refuel. So our opponent's got nothing now. So they just sort of spent all their resources there because to try and get through what we were doing. An Urza Saga, you say. Right, I'll play out this Saga. This can find us a Tormos Crypt when it pops. Our opponent does just have a creature in the bin, so another reanimate off the top is good. Okay, drew a land. Okay, a force of negation. This puts us in an awkward place. Because we can't activate our saga now. Because we don't want to put either of these blue cards, we need to keep it to save it. Which means we're going to run into disappearing land problems pretty sharpish. Right, it's bad lands. Or oh, they're drawn for turn. Another land. Sure. We don't actually get any value out of this saga, other than the fact it's going to find us a Tormod Crypt. Ugh, this is awkward, isn't it? So we get the Tormod Crypt here. And now we just sat here waiting for mana sources, really. 
A lot of do nothing on our side right now. Chalice of the Void. That we can't cast for one without g putting shields down on the Force of Negation, which we can't do. Yeah. Feels like our deck has a lot of potential really awkward draws in it. We've got the crazy explosive stuff, but then we've got the pieces that don't really work and many disappearing lands problem. Days undoing. Okay. We can play a Chrome Mox imprinting our Days undoing here. This allows us to play the Chalice on one, which I think is the right play here. If we have to pitch the Narset to a Force of Negation, we will, but ideally we'd like to cast the Narset. So we're looking for a blue card and a land. Well, there's a blue card. So if we can draw a land next turn, we can deploy the Narset. And then we can follow up with the Days Undoing and be in a reasonable spot. I say reasonable, we're in a very good spot if we do that. Land? It's close to a land, isn't it? So blue, blue, one. Let's get the Narset in there. Let's have a look. I'll take... Seagate Restoration, please. And I'll play this. Alright, so next turn we can Daze Undoing. But if we have to pitch the Force of Negation this turn, then so be it. Okay. A Chrome Mox. We're not doing anything with this. We're just going to draw some cards. We're not going to activate the Nars set because we don't want to lose the extra card we get. Alright, opponent. We now don't have any count spells, but our opponent doesn't have any cards in hand. Alright. So now we can kind of win the game our leisure here. Right, so we have this, this, activate this, uh, get a Lion's Eye Diamond, play this out, one, two, three, four, play this out, imprint this Echo, it's fine, play this out, cast this, one, two, three, four, hold priority, we will minus this, crack this for white, crack this for blue, we're going to get Mike Synth Lattice. Now our opponent doesn't get to cast spells again. None of their permits do anything. That should be game. None of their cards have got colours. They can't even do pitch cast stuff. And we eventually win the game with whatever like the Saga token will do. Okay. Um, felt happy with how I sideboarded there. I think we just run it back. Felt very edge of the seat there. Because we, we were basically in this weird top deck war with our opponent where the first one to draw some good stuff. Wins. Now, we did have a Crypt in play, so we went, excuse me, completely shield down, and we did end up drawing a counter spell too. But it easily could have gone the other way there. Alright, we got Force of Will and we got Wheel. These are things that we want to keep, so let's see how bad it is for us. Our opponent kept seven, so we probably lose this game, because Reanimator keeping sevens is usually pretty strong. Alright, so what are we looking at here? We can play this. Lion's Eye Diamond. There's Lotus Petal. So we could just wheel now and try and mess with our opponent's original hand. Or we can wait till next turn and then do that with a Nasa. If we echo now, our opponent could still entomb at end of turn. So I think we are just passing the turn here. If we have to pitch a card to force with it, it'll be the echo. Sure, so we will get rid of the enabler here. And then we can hopefully use the Nasa to find some more action. Right, a Lotus Petal. I'm going to see like a face is looting off the petal. We are. Okay, so they could reanimate a big monster this turn and there's not really much we could do about it. Just a grief. That's not that exciting. We're just going to get Thoughts these. They're going to take our Narset here. That's fine. Irritating, but fine. And we can build up to the Karma Great Creator soon. So we find a Soul Land, which is a thing that we play, we can start jamming Khan. Alright, so would we rather jam the Khan or the Urza Saga? I think we'll do the Khan here. And then get a Tormoz Crypt. That's why we left one in the sideboard. We'll play this. We're slightly incentivized to get rid of the looting, but I think we just want to hold this for now. Now, if they spend their turn casting phases looting, that's not the end of the world for us. Exume. Do I care about them getting a grief back? No, I don't. They can have a grief. They can't take our saga. We can get an ensnaring bridge and sit behind it. A lotus petal? Okay. So this doesn't do anything due to the Khan. We're looking for here. Another Tormot's Crypt, you say. So we will minus this. We'll get the ensnaring bridge. 
cast in Stonebridge. I think our Tormod's Crypt are better in play right now. And I will get rid of these two phases lootings now. Just to stop our opponent being able to dig for a better play. So I feel we've uh, got over the hump here. A Nasset. Okay, that's a pretty good one. Let's just get rid of this Lotus Petal now. We can't actually play this right now. So I think we will pass. I wouldn't mind something like a seat of the Synod in the sideboard as an option to fetch. We don't have that sort of thing, unfortunately. Right, so we're going to make an Ezra Saga Construct token, which is going to be quite large, but it can't really attack. So, But if we wheel, then we can attack with it in the near future anyway. Let's make a guy. Right, this time we're just going to float mana. And we'll get this Mox Opal, I think. And play our Scary. And we'll cast this using the mana from our Mox Opal that we've just got. And we will minus this. Uh, force of Negation. I'm not unhappy if you see that. Not quite where we're at just yet. And then we're done for turn. So Serenity can be a bit of a beating for us. Dark Ritual. Sure. This might have just been to get out a... It might just be casting out the Grief, I suppose. Yeah, okay. It, sometimes you would cast a Dark Ritual in that situation to try and maybe bait out a counter spell. I think when they have that much mana, I'm unlikely to counter it. So they had the Grief anyway. So we're looking for... We can Lattice Lock them right now. Uh, I don't really want to cast Days Undoing, to be honest. I think we will... So this is three, four, five, six. That makes sense to me. Um... Minus this. Get the Microsynth Lattice. Deploy the Microsynth Lattice. And we're not going to plus the Narset now. There's no need. We can do that next turn if we want to. I guess we could find a counter spell, but what is our opponent going to cast? Their lands don't do anything. We just want to make sure we don't end up with too many cards in hand at one point. Alright. So this can blow up a land. This can minus. Uh, sure, I have a Seagate Restoration. Play this. We'll not play the life. And pass the turn. Like we will eventually win this game. May take some time, but we'll get there. Plus on this. Play this out. Play this out. Pass the turn. Not sure what our opponent can have in this situation. Bunch of spirit guys and beside you. Right. That's again another Khan. Uh, we will minus this one. And we'll get ourselves a Sky Sovereign. So this one, two, three, four. Our life total doesn't matter here because our opponent is uh, is out of this game. So we'll get rid of one of these. Play this up. And we could deploy another Khan if we want to. Might as well. Three, four. All right, they're scooping up because the game is over, as you can clearly see from what's going on here. So it was a tight one at times, uh, but we did manage to pull through in the end. Our deck can do some powerful stuff, and we have some good suppressive elements, provided we can fade uh, certain things from our opponent's side of the... Deck. We're very lucky to have a double force of negation hand there, otherwise we lose that game. But yeah, let's go to round three. We are one and one. We're on the draw, but we're relatively close to doing some pretty broken stuff, so I'm going to keep this one. Wasteland, not going to be our friend. Mishra's Bauble. Are we looking at 8 cast? Are we looking at a Saga Storm? Are we looking at Delver? Immediate cracking of the Bauble is interesting. Feeling more towards the Delver spectrum here. So Wasteland's Ahoy is what we're saying here. Okay, so saw our Mox Opal. Uh, what are we going to play out here? We'll play our Ancient Tomb. This is the one I care about getting Wastelanded least, maybe? Uh, we could have played the Sapras and Scary and they could just wasteland it straight away. Right, so we're going to lose our Ancient Tomb here. Sure. So maybe that's wrong. We should have played that on Scary. Ends up in much the similar position, except we don't have an untapped source. So the one way we're, we're messed up for that is if we draw... Okay, that's not one of the ones that matters. Right, let's play the Scary out. And we can do end of turn, hold Breacher. Next turn. Another Wasteland. Alright. One of those games, is it? They don't have a threat, so this isn't the end of the world for us. Right, we'll cast a Spell Bomb. This will give us uh, Metal Craft, so it's actually a relatively important spell to resolve. Misstep. Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce. 
on Spellbomb. So the reason they're doing this is because it all we're trying to get our mocks open online, but I don't think this is where I want to fight with the um, force. I'd rather save that for something scary. That's fine. Oh my god. Opponent, why you do these things? Alright, we have an Ezra Saga now. We could play the Chalice on zero, but that doesn't feel like a great strategy. Much of our deck relies on zero. Have we got the fourth Wasteland? It would make me sad, but I do enjoy Wasteland and people myself, so I can't really complain. Right, we're doing a little baby Merc Tide. I don't think we can race this with where we're at now, so we will... I think the whole is going to be easier to cast, so we're going to get rid of the Nasa here. <clears throat> so we're going to take one from this. Another Lion's Eye Diamond. Interesting. Let's see if we can do a Chalice for one. Right, we're in with the Chalice for one. That's... It's going to shut off our opponent's cantrips and lightning bolts, which means our whole breacher, if we can cast it, is going to have a bit more luck. So if we can draw Echo Eons, we might be able to try and go for it next turn with the whole breacher. All right, so they're doing this. They know it's going to get hit by the chalice, but they just want to surveil and make their guy larger. So that's a good play. It seems like a waste of a card, but they're pumping their creature and they're also getting rid of some cards that they can't cast off the top of their library, so... Solid play. Another Merc Tide. All right, they also fueled their Merc Tide doing an excellent play. Okay, Triple Wasteland, double Merc Tide. We're gonna we're gonna struggle a bit here. What do we find? Saprazan, scary. Uh, we can't get the East Spell because it's already gone. Chromox doesn't help us here. I think it's got to be the Lotus Petal here. We'll play this, and then I think we are casting this guy. Now, they do have a decent chunk of damage. I doubt they're going to be able to easily remove our whole Breacher with a Chalice in play. Because their removal is generally efficient in one mana. They might have a Brazen Borrower down the line. Or something like that. However, this Merc Tide clocks us in three turns. So we need to find something. If we can find an Echo of Eons, we're in great shape. Days Undoing, we can also cast and pay around days. So, we've got eight draws in our deck. More or less win us the game. Right, they're just trying to get their Dragon's Rage Channeler to be delirious. All right, still only one type. They're coming in for five. Yep. Chrome Mox, that does nothing. We need, we'd rather hold this guy back on blocks, I think, rather than attacking here. I don't think we're winning a quick race. We're trying to combo. If we don't combo, we lose the game, I think. Unless we can find a calm, but we don't really have the mana. To play Khan. We just need to do the thing. Okay, this puts a creature in their graveyard. Alright. So we have one more draw step to try and find one of our pieces. Do we find it? Seagate Restoration. What does that do for us? Absolutely nothing. Sure. So you can definitely see one of the weaknesses of this deck where you just have a bunch of stuff that doesn't do a lot on its own. And you just end up with like hand, like a board like this. Where we just can't actually play a functional game of magic. Alright, let's go to the sideboard. <clears throat> Delver, eh? I think Delver might be a defense grid matchup here. We just want to do our thing and say no to whatever they're doing. We are a little bit worried about meltdowns, though. Uh, we want the Pithy Needle for Wasteland. I think this is probably about where we're looking at here. Got one counter spell for meltdown. That's about it. Sure, I think we submit like this. Pith and Needle is mainly a thing we're hoping to have in our hand, because if we get it off as a, as a saga, then our land's already done everything it's going to need to do. Which is the problem with Pith and Needle as an answer to Wasteland if you've only got one of them. Right, we're on the play. We can Wasteland, we can stop their Wasteland. I think we will do this, and just play an as a saga game, and try and dodge the Meltdown. We did say we wanted this on our opening hand, so weird how that's panned out. Now, to be fair, in that previous game, my opponent did have triple Wasteland. But we did cast all the spells in our hand, and it didn't get us anywhere. So, so next time we can play out this Ancient Tomb and start making Saga Tokens. It's going to be a little ways until we get the Narset on the go, though. That's a thing for later, I think. Let's just get the big boys in. We don't have a Shadow Spear, so we can't just 
make a load of guys and then beat them down with some massive constructs and gain life and sort of invalidate their aggro plan. So we're on a little bit of a clock against our own ancient tomb as well. But they might not be able to attack into this because it's all be a 2 2. Flooded Strand. Another channeler. I'm going to follow this up with a spell. Alright. Let's make a thing. They've got Stifle here. Or are they just fetch him preemptively in case we have another Pith in Nino? Alright. So we'll just make some guys here. Let it be known that Meltdown is not going to be our friend. Um, throw on the Lion's Eye Diamond for later. Play this out and we'll go to tax. Like if our opponent has Meltdown, they're going to get us with it. And that's going to be sad. But if they don't have the Meltdown, we probably win this game very easily. It's the, the very wide gap between ceiling and floor on this deck. Alright. Feels like a Meltdown. What else would you play red and the blue for? Yep, there's the Meltdown. Sure, we lose all of our permanents. Well, not we, we end up with two permanents left, but we spent four life into these construct tokens as well, and that's not going to get us anywhere. Thankfully, their channelers aren't leith, aren't uh, delirious yet, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, let's cast a Narset here. Is this good enough? Like they're telegraphing a pyroblast, but we can't. Like the other thing we could do there is Khan, but I don't think that's going to get us where we need to be. Like we can now jam the Khan if we want to. But these uh, ancient tombs just jamming us up. So, do this. This. Pitch the days I'm doing. Cast the Khan. They got days? They did not have a days. Okay, we will minus this and get ourselves in Snow Bridge for next turn. This is our plan to turtle. Well, we could get a uh, an engineered explosives, and then play that and blow it. But I don't think that's going to get us there. Wasteland beats us here. Two lightning bolts beats us. I'm not sure how many lightning bolts are going to be in their deck. They might have just swapped them out for pyroblasts for the most part. But going to be tough here. And if Khan soaks up some damage for us, then that's okay. But we have the Zeka Vions, which we're not going to be able to get out of our hand. So if they can shrink their Dragon's Rose Channelers again, then they might be able to just get us with 1-1s. One right, a Brainstorm as well. They're sculpting, all right. There's a case of if they want to just get us dead or kill the Khan. But they want to get as much information as possible to know if they can just bolt us out. Where are these going? One at the Khan. So we save three life on that. So double bolt won't finish us off. Alright, so you can play out our Urza Saga. I think we are going to lose our Saprazan Scary to make our Ensnaring Bridge. Force of Negation, sure. I didn't really want to crack an Ancient Tomb. So, how do we win this one? I guess we lines our diamond into a really good wheel and just do that a couple of times. This matchup feels pretty horrible, to be honest. Right, a good aggressive clock, land disruption for our horrible mana base, counter spells, including pyroblasts. Yeah, they kind of got everything you would want in this matchup. Right, that's us dead. Yeah, we got absolutely smeared by the Delver deck there. I would happily be on the, the Delver side of this matchup every time. Yeah, like they got meltdowns as well. It just feels like they have every single angle that our deck attempts covered. All right, let's go to round four. We're one and two. Like, I think this is the sort of hand we're supposed to keep. We've got some interaction without actually losing one of our combo pieces for it because we have a backup hole breacher. We can play the hole breacher on turn two. We have the Lion's Eye Diamond for if we find an Echo, so we can kind of do it all if we get lucky. Thespian stage, okay. So our lands are just going to get wastelanded and we're going to lose the game. Understood. So we have three Ottawaras and an Ether Spell Bomb. That's going to be our attempt to blurt to get rid of their token when they eventually get to making it uh wasteland yeah how is our deck supposed to beat wasteland that is a good question all right saprazan scary mark two let's see if this does anything we can play the khan if we want to next turn a mox diamond okay dark depths what's getting taken here wasteland all right yeah like, we, we can't be Wasteland, so... God, deck doesn't really do anything, does it? 
Uh, we'll play out one of our Lion's Eye Diamonds. Um, do we play out the Ottawara? I don't think so. I think we might need it in the very near future. But I guess we're supposed to play it out and maybe our opponent will waste time blowing it up. Life from Alone, get back Wasteland. Wasteland out Ottawara. Yep. Sure. I guess they're giving us time and maybe we can string together enough artifact mana to, to avoid this. Or maybe wheel away their Life of the Loam and Wasteland. Nope. Can't do anything. This is the second game we've just been unable to play Magic because of Wasteland. Real problem for us. I guess Blood Moon is going to be similar in some respects, except we'll at least have the raw pips and then we can use um, Artifact Mana for the colours. Alright. Uh, do we have an island? We do. We have the one island. Alright, that's helped us out. Actually happy about that. Force of Will. Um, I think I'll deploy this Lion's Eye Diamond. We might be in the counter spell Life from Alone, so they can't besage you our, life, our Lion's Eye Diamond. Is that how bad it's gone? Maybe. If our opponent had actually just gone down the uh, threat route, I think we could have lost this game already. Let's get rid of one of our hull breaches. Let's say no to desperation. That's our opponent's green mana for the turn in theory. I don't think they got back a green source earlier. There's a Dark Depths. A Sphere of Resistance. So we have to say no to Sphere of Resistance. Ancient Tomb. Okay. Now we're kicking with gas a little bit. So our opponent's going to wasteland this, and then we're going to flash in the whole breach in response. Saga, yep. They can just make the guy now have a 2020 at their disposal. So this is the mono green build, so it's not going to have any punishing fires or anything, because it's got the sphere resistant in the flex slot. We need something good here, deck. Echo of Eons, possibly. Um, what does Khan do for us here? Khan gets us ensnaring bridge. They do have a Besage you, but they might not have a second green mana. Okay. One, two, three, four. What is this? Play this Chrome Mox out with no imprint so that we at least have a, um, a mana source here. Uh, for um, Mox Opals if we lose some. They've got this one green mana floating. If they have a Besage you, we lose regardless. So we just let we just go to our second main, and then do it. Sure, you can make the guy. Right, it's snow bridge time. Our opponent doesn't have any green mana showing right now, so we might be able to bide our time through some Besaju's for a bit. We they do have Besaju and Life from Alone, but they need a green source. They can get a green source when their Ezra cycle pops, but if we didn't get the snow bridge this turn, we lose the game. So our plan is next turn to draw. Hmm, a Echo of Eons doesn't do it now. We need the other one, the Days Undoing. Right, so that doesn't do it now. But, well, actually, we can do it with Echo of Eons, actually, because we have Khan that can go and get our Lion's Eye Diamond. Shadow Spear, sure. What do we have on our sideboard that helps us out here? Yes, yeah, so he has decided I can't get them a green source because their artifacts won't work. Um, we're supposed to minus here. And get ourselves the liquid metal coating. Play the coating. So our opponent can get a one or zero drops. That's Mox Diamond or um, is it Mox Diamond Pithing Needle on Khan is pretty good. What can we do about that? Not very much. Yeah, so we're going to lose our Khan activations here. But we can still use Liquid Metal Coating as like a Richard and Port type effect. Because the Khan's static ability still works. And we might be able to bounce the... Oh no, this is terrible news for us. So we could have got the Tormod's Crypt and removed their graveyard last turn. But they sandbagged this... Uh, yeah, they sandbagged the forest, I guess. Or they just drew it that turn. That's super awkward. We can fade this out next turn though. Not the end of the world. But it's pretty close to the end of the world. Seagate Restoration, you say. That's a whole lot of nothing, isn't it? Uh, we will not pay the life here. 
Right, so our opponent can do this for one mana because of um, Marit Lage being a legendary creature. Well, let's see if they're aware of this information. Do they know that they can besage you in response? They do. Oh, interesting. A Savannah. Okay, they got Prismatic Ending in their deck as well. Okay, so they could have besaged with a Marit Lage anyway. I don't think they needed to do that. Yep, so we lose there. I think maybe if we'd have got the Tormod's Crypt instead of the Khan, uh, instead of the Liquid Metal Coating, because they were missing land drops, so I just wanted to put them in the dirt. But yeah, we uh, we could have done that one better. Right, so Force of Negation, excellent against Leyline of the Void. I'll have a Tormod's Crypt in the main, just to have more of these. Do I want something like an Engineered Explosives here? I don't think so. And then we're good, Ether Spell I'm good. Chance of the Void does similar things to uh, Force of Negation in terms of getting rid of the problem card forever. In, well, not forever, but for long enough. So we need one more cut here. It's probably something that's going to get eaten by a meltdown here. Uh, we do get to sort of just do our combo as we see fit. I think we probably trim one day's undoing. That's probably the weakest of them all. Yeah, a bit of an experience with the deck here. I think I was supposed to get a Tormod's Crypt there. See, opening up hands like this is just pretty miserable. Like, we could Nars it on turn one. We are, we get to dodge Wastelands, I guess. We do lose immediately to Meltdown, pretty much. Are we supposed to just play turn one Nars it with an activation? I think maybe we are. I'll try it. Like, the really good hands with this deck, I know what they look like to start with, but, like, your average or, like, okay keepable hands, I don't really know what that's supposed to look like. Or you're only supposed to mulligan until you find like the really good explosive ones. But sometimes just wheeling early on isn't really good enough. Because you need your A plus your B. Low special. Chrome Mox. Imprint Force of Negation. Our opponent is F6, so we're not expecting a Force of Vigor here. Alright. Turn 1 Nasa. Let's see what it finds us. We have a day's undoing. We just need a mana. Sure. This could be great. Mox Diamond. Alright. That's pretty bad for us. That means they can play something like a Sphere of Resistance this turn, which is going to absolutely jam us up. Saga. You can see the Sphere. Or is it Exploration and Friends? Besaidu on our Chrome Mox. That's kind of much of a muchness because we do have the one land. It means we're slightly less percentage to draw another land. A Pithing Needle. That's not really the one. Let's see if we can find... Hmm. It's kind of awkward, isn't it? Right, let's get a Mox Opal. Let's play a Pit and Needle on Urza Saga. Do we play out a Mox Opal now in fear of... So are we playing around some sort of Meltdown effect or are we playing around Sphere? I think we play around Sphere because they're, they've shown us that they have a green build. So I think I'll play this one out. And then next turn we are Days Undoing. And hopefully... Alright, the Wasteland doesn't impact us right now, so that's okay. A Sphere stops us from casting this unless we draw a land. God, the mana on our deck is so shocking. Alright. Yep, we are in the dirt where we can't actually play spells anymore. Because this costs four, and we don't have four. Yeah, this is pretty good. Now our opponent can get Pithy Needle to shut off future Narsets if they want. Or they can preemptively shut off the Khan. Not that we are likely to cast that in the near future. Yeah, these sorts of effects just feel really strong against us, like Sphere Resistance and Wasteland combo, or just Wastelands in general, guess. So they can Expedition map for something scary. Not sure what. Probably have plenty of options. Is this the turn we draw a mana? It's not the turn we draw a mana. We can play a Chalice for one to stop crop rotation, but I'd rather play the Chalice for two to stop... Um, what's it called? Life from the Lame, but... If we get four mana, we're casting days on doing. So I think we're just playing this for one. It's not great. We might crop rotate in response. Okay. What are they getting off of this? And they got a ghost quarter. If they got a ghost quarter, then we lose the game. I think. I don't think we can beat ghost quarter here. And strip us of all of our permanents. Thespian stage. Okay. That's not a ghost quarter. So we have a chance to cast our days on doing. Maybe. There's a Thespian stage. 
Is this the time we draw a mana source? It is not. Ugh. Yep. We just die into the old sphere of resistance. Dark Depths. So our opponent has a 20-20. So we need to go off this turn and have the mana to stop their Dark Depths from killing us. I don't know what that looks like. Hmm. I don't know if we can even win this game. So we can play so you get Restoration. We can Days Undoing. But then what happens, right? So we do this. They make a 20-20. The turn ends. Oh, they didn't. Right, they misclicked, I guess. Okay, they've just given us a free turn there. That's pretty good for us. They, they had the 20-20 right there, so... Now we have an opportunity to try and turtle up again. So... One, two, three, four, five, six. What does that do in the face of Sphere of Resistance? So we would need a Khan and other stuff to make this work. I think we have to play the Narset here. We play this land out. Tap two, blue, blue. Make this minus two. A day's undoing that we can't cast, I guess. Uh, we play a land for the turn. A Chrome Mox cost us a mana to play, but I guess that's fine. So you get restoration under it. And pass the turn. Is our opponent going to make the 2020? They should have killed us last turn. They just made a 2020 in response to Days Undoing. Yeah, we're dead. Yeah, I don't even know what we're supposed to do there in that matchup. Like, Sphere Resistance plus Wasteland. Like, we just lost one game straight up to Wasteland. And then this game, the Sphere Resistance just meant that our horrible mana base didn't get there. Maybe we're not supposed to keep the hand that goes turn one Narset, but that's kind of like one of the better things we can do, right? Do that into a big combo thing. I don't know. I'm, I clearly need some pointers on how to play this deck. But at the same point, this deck just feels like the floor of this deck is in the absolute dirt. Whereas the ceiling, you know, if you get the really cool nutso stuff, then it's really, really strong. But I wonder how often you fall into the sort of unplayable floor of this deck. All right, let's go to round five. We're trying to get the 2-3 now. Alright. We have turn 1 Chalice. That's a pretty good play. And then we can play turn 2 Narset. And if we find a Lines of Diamond, we can just do our thing. So I think this is where we want to be. Play this. We've got Spare Narset to stick underneath it. Force of Will. Pitching Minor Misstep. Having shown us Minor Misstep, I'm going to play out our Lettuce Battle. If they're going to Prismatic Ending, they're going to Prismatic Ending our Chrome Mox at the end of the day. So we're probably looking at Jeskai Control. That's a deck that would run Arab Mesa. Shot Ponder. So our Narset is just going to be good as a card on its own in this matchup, which is nice. Haven't really played many matchups where it's felt like it's just a good card. Alright. Let's play the Use All Our Mana Sources to try and play a spell game. We got Force or anything. Let's minus two this. We get a Lotus Petal. So that's something for next turn, if we want it. I don't want to get double Prismatic Ending, so I'm going to keep this in hand for now. And then next turn we can try today's undoing our opponent. Or, yeah, we can try today's undoing our opponent, and then, the turn, and then if that doesn't work, we can then Echo of Eons. So we should be able to win this game, I think. Maybe it Pyroblast my guess, but otherwise we'll be alright. Let's get Lines of Diamond. Play this out. Let's cast this. I'm not expecting this to resolve. Oh, wow. It did resolve. All right. And that's the game. So this is one of the matchups where doing that actually wins you the game. Whereas some other matchups, it doesn't... I think our opponent's still got some, some reasonable amount of game to play here, right? We can't... I guess next turn we cast Hull Breacher. And then the turn after, we cast Days Undoing. Like we're not even doing that much having Wield there, really. All right. Sideboarding. Our opponent is a control deck that's going to try and stop us. So I would like defense grids. Which means our force of wills are probably less good. But we can still keep one in. Uh, we kind of need to hit our opponent's narsets as well. Does that mean we do need to keep the... I don't think this is beneath the spellbomb game. So you probably keep in a force there. Yeah, I think this is one of the matchups that we're actually favoured in. Which feels like the only one today, to be honest. But... Alright, let's try it like this. 
Alright, we can keep this. We've got an Urza Saga plan, which is pretty good against control decks in general. Try our Saga. I don't think we need to deploy our Petals and Chrome Moxes just yet. We can do that next turn, because if our opponent does have something like a Prismatic Ending, I'd like to be able to not get bodied by it. And at least be able to activate our Saga. Our land, play out Chrome Mox. I'm going to force this to stop us getting a Saga token. Certainly thinking about it. Uh, I kind of fear Meltdown a little bit, so I'm not going to play out the Petal. I don't think our opponent's going to have Lightning Bolts in their deck when they've got good white removal to play instead. We can play it next turn because it equals more damage, but we don't want to play it now into a, some disruption. Okay, so let's make a token response. we got a 2-2. It's going to be a 1-1. And this Urza Saga will... So, for not playing out the Petal there, we get a little bit punished for not making another token. So maybe it's a bit cautious playing around that. Mm, I think we want the Lion's Eye Diamond here. So we could just try and jam out a Khan here. But what does that actually do for us? We'll lose an Ottawara to do so. Mm, not really a fan of this. I think we'll just attack with our 3-3 three, three here. And then deploy the Saprazan Scary. Oh. Just yielded through my turn. That was smart, wasn't it? Having a real mare today. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Pretty good. Goodbye. Token. Yeah, so not playing that Sapper Sound Scary next turn is... Uh, last turn is a huge problem for us there. Alright, we can play this. It pressures the Jace. I don't think I want to play a Days Undoing. Our opponent gets plus three cards. I think that's where I want to be when they got the Jace to throw back the bad cards as well. Yeah, we could have tried for a Khan this turn if we'd have played the Scary last turn. To Fairy Time Raveler. That's going to hit our Saga. Yep. We can deploy Saga. Let our opponents slowly take over the game. Plusing on that to Fairy. Doing some brainstorming with Jace. A Ponder. Interesting they're doing that after they've already played their land. Because they can do that instant speed if they wanted to. A Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay. Put it scary. I'll put out the Lion's Eye Diamond. This is just a way to pump our constructs further. We're going to have to use the Lotus Petal to pump our Saga tokens. I imagine our opponent has some number of Pyroblasts in hand right now. There's not a great deal we can do about that. Yeah, the Pyroblasts are going to stop whenever we try to cast these. The casting these is actively bad. Well, it's, it's okay now because our opponent's up to seven cards already. Staff the Storyteller. Yep, it's a strong one. We could get a Pith and to stop this. We get a Pith and to stop to Ferry or to stop Jace. Depends what we think is going to be useful here. They haven't shown us a Shark Typhoon yet. So we don't know how deep into the Staff of the Storyteller they are. Make a token. We're going to get Dress Down here. Dress Down. Sure. Get this Pith and Needle. I don't put it onto Ferry Time Raveler. Just want our opponent to bounce our stuff out of play once we. Go the trouble of getting into play. Put the saga and just carry on the saga train. Now, our opponent's so far ahead here, but maybe we can slip something through at some point. Now, it's our opponent's game to lose here. We are very far behind. Fairy Mastermind. Yeah. Let's see the damage. Alright. A brainstorm. Not so bad. Now, our opponent's drawn a lot more cards than us. Because they have the virtue of just playing intrinsically good cards. Whereas, if you look at pretty much all the cards we have available to us, none of them are really particularly good on their own apart from Kant. Like maybe we get to a point where our opponent sculpted a perfect hand. We just say, let's give you a random seven instead of, excuse me, your good seven. All right. Do I think we have time to try and grind some Urza Saga value and then jump them with a Narset? I guess we can do both. So we lose our Saprazan Scary to do this. I do not think the spell is going to resolve. There we go, there's a Pyroblast, sure. So we'll Urza Saga, make some guys, try and pressure the Jace, but the Jace is just single-handedly beating us. Their grip is so full and it's full of all the right cards. A Brainstorm every turn is a lot. So they've got a reasonable uh, speed clock as well. They're leaving this back to protect their planeswalkers. Makes sense. Make a construct. Are we going to get dressed down again? We did not get dressed down again. We don't have an opal yet. I'll take the opal. 
The second Ottawara is really annoying. Um, I think we'll go to attacks first. Let's attack the Jace. I think we're just playing the second Ottawara out. So we can play into their Force of Will slash Pyroblast. Hardcast Force of Will? Yeah, sure. We have to get rid of them all at some point. Opponent's got a three turn clock, but we have a pretty chunky clock of our own. Each player draws a card, okay. So they draw two cards for this. Or three cards, sorry, because I got two of them, yeah. So we can try a Khan next turn, but the Ancient Tomb is really hurting us at this point. Melt down, you say. Yep. How are we going to get out of this jam? Hmm. Prince has got a lot of cards in hand. So that's a fairy's back online as well. Yikes. Hmm. Nasty that we can't cast. I guess we'll try and go for a, uh, a day's undoing here. A minor misstep, sure. Your hand. Uh, we're dead if we do that anyway, aren't we? Yeah, I think we're just dead here altogether. I don't think misplaying with that sap plan scary made the most difference, but it was still very annoying clicking the wrong pass priority button, which I occasionally do. All right, back to this. I think we still want the defense grid over the other bits and pieces anyway. I think we'll just submit like this and go again. On the play, we can maybe do a bit more, get a chance of the void down early. Try and live it a bit more like game one. All right, I'm down with this hand. We'll keep this. A mulligan to six cards. I think we do still play the defense grid on turn one. All right, and then we can chalice on turn two, and then we can deploy a Khan. Can't actually use this Chromox because we haven't got any colored spells to put in it. I think we'll play this one out. We'll cast this Pithy Needle first. So I'm naming stuff as Storyteller or to Fairy Time Rabbler. I think it's Teferi here. And then, so you can definitely see some of the awkwardness of this deck in the fact that we can't, we, we've got these Chromoxes, but we don't have that many things to imprint to them apart from our really important spells. Now, sometimes we can get flooded by having lots of them like we did in the last game. But, so they can, Prismatic Ending away our Chalice of the Void this turn if they want. A Fairy Master Mine. All right, this is going for the old beatdown. We need to find a Mana Source here. But we can just as a saga, which is probably going to be okay. Meltdown will cause us trouble, but again, we can't beat Meltdown, so let's not worry about it. Like, a Meltdown this turn is bad. All right, no red source, that's something. Back to basics. Do I want one as a saga thing now? Or do I want to cast the Khan? Yikes. Uh, I guess we don't want to make a token here. Uh, how big will the token be? One, two, three, four, five. Against a deck that's designed to block creatures. I think that's going to be better than a Khan. Sure. Let's make a guy. Can't do anything about this saga. Yeah, we're just drawing these cards that we just can't cast. Uh, do you want a Lion's Eye Diamond so we can wheel again, or just do you want a, a Mox Opal so we can play the game? Sure, we'll get a Mox Opal. Um... I'm going to play this one out with no imprint because that gives us a 6-6, six, six, which is a three-turn clock. Yeah, so we have all these cards we can't cast. And we have this Chrome Mox we can't put anything in. It just feels like so much of our deck is dead air. Right, they got a Meltdown here just to absolutely put us in the bin. Looks like it. Prismatic Ending on the Chalice. Okay. The Ponder. If they attack us with a Fairy, we will deploy the Chrome Mox here. So we can attack for six. Right, we don't need to do that now. So our opponent is on chump blocking duty next turn. Again, our hand doesn't do anything right now, but we just have this one construct token. All right, they found a source to plat shares. Now we need to try and find another way of approaching this game. Our lands do not untap. We only have access to two mana. One of that is a disappearing mana. We can't put anything on our chrome mox. Even if we do find something that we can put in our chrome mox, we still can't deploy our spells yet, so we may as well hold it so we don't just get meltdowned. Yep. Yikes. This feels bad. Alright, deck. We can try and deploy a Khan now. Do you want to deploy a Khan? I think a Khan is better than Days I'm doing here, right? I want to get, I just don't want to re reload my opponent's entire hand. It feels like a disaster. One, two, three, four. 
How they got a force of will, blue card, and then pain three. All right, we're in with the Khan. Okay, now what do we do with it? Uh, what have we got on our sideboard right now? Uh, we're close to being able to blow up a back to basics. We need another mana source. Skyship Sovereign. I guess liquid metal coating is a thing that we get to do here, right? Uh, but if we minus this, it goes to three. And they attack it to one, then we go up to two, and then it dies. So I think we have to plus it. Um, are we plusing it on our defense grid and attacking with a defense grid? I think so. And then next turn we can get Mike Synth. Let's see if we can get two damage in. All right. Um, liquid Metal Coating. Uh, we can use that to animate our own Khan if we want a 4 4. All right, so there's a 2 2. Oh, sorry, we're just getting activated a bit of the army. A whole breach. Okay, that's a threat that importantly has the same amount of power as our opponent has life. Now, we will need to find a mana source to deploy it. But let's just... Like, if they find the Meltdown, I think we are very much in trouble. They might keep the Fairy Master Mind on blocks now. So you could always send the Pithing Needle at them. And force them to trade there. But I quite like getting the Liquid Metal Coating. This turn. And then we can use that to make Karn an artifact. Plus Karn on itself to make it a 4-4 four -four and kill them. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay. I can't actually bounce our permanents right now. But what it can do is dig them towards a meltdown. Oh yeah, this it can bounce this kind of, yeah. Sorry. Still, that's still a creature here. But I think it was right to do the attacking with it. I probably only got three cards here. What are they cracking here? Don't kill us. Uh, okay. So we're unlocking the Teferi. And then making it so we don't have any uh, things that can attack this turn. Because we don't want to animate a zero drop here. Seagate Restoration. Um, plus no targets. It's very suspicious that we didn't play the defense grid. Right, here goes nothing. Can we get some treasures? We cannot get any treasures. Sure, the Pyroblast wins the day there. Uh, Sky Sovereign does not hit players, if I recall correctly. Not that we are going to get near the mana to do this. It does hit Planeswalkers, though, which is not nothing. All right, our opponent can keep doing their bits and pieces and pondering around. They're on two. We're not a million miles away. But it's getting harder. Their red source is tapped. All right, found another red source. All right. A little bit sad. All right, attacking with a fairy. Saprazan, scary. Let's play a defense grid. We'll just plus one, no targets. This means it's going to be more likely to be alive for next turn. And we need to animate our defense grid for the lethal attack, potentially. Defense grid does a reasonable job of protecting itself as well, as a creature. Depending on what our opponent does with their fairy mastermind, will give us an indication of what's in their hand. If they attack our Khan, then they probably have an answer. They can pay, yeah, okay. Attacking the Khan, so they almost certainly have an answer to the defense grid. So I'd like to draw another defense grid here. An ancient tomb, does that change anything? Uh... They must have an answer. What do we have on our sideboard? Do we have anything that we can actually use here? Lattice, coating. I want the coating. I, I'm not sure if our Khan is going to resolve. They have to have removal for this. Otherwise, they wouldn't attack with the fairy. I don't think our opponent would bluff that. It's, I think we minus this and go and get ourselves the liquid melt coating for next turn. And then we can play out this ancient tomb. And we can try for a Khan. Force of Will. Pitching Force of Will. Okay. I imagine the other card in their hand is the removal spell. Because like I said, they'd leave the fairy back to block if it mattered. Yikes. We're so... So close yet so far. If we can... Draw our, Another Soul Land and deploy our Khan. We might be able to win with the defense grid. Urza's Saga. We get to make one construct here. All right, we will deploy this because it's more or less free to do so. What is this? Counter spell. Sure. I'm not really sure that's worth a counter spell. So if we make a token, our opponent attacks us. So we we go to three now. Then we make a token as we're getting attacked to one. And then we have a lethal token. 
So we might be able to squeak it with the token. It's tight. Tight margins over here. I'm not going to cast this. We're just going to try and win with the as a side token. That's all we got. If they plow it, at least it gives us a little more time. It has to be a plow because if they play it to ferry, they won't have enough mana to play around. I guess if they play a land, they will have enough mana to play around. Are they leaving their guy on blocks? No, they're attacking. Very rude. Is this the dreaded dress down? All right, they're plowing it. So that buys us some life to work with here. This stays tapped. And we get the ability off of it. If we get a Chrome Mox, we can deploy a Narset here. Sure, I get Chrome Mox. We'll imprint this Echo. And then we'll deploy the Narset. Chrome's got five cards in hand again, so... Force of Will doesn't do it, but Force of Negation might do. A Brainstorm. All right, they're just getting this Brainstorm out of the way because they're not going to be able to use it under the Narset. I think we are incentivized to get a card off of this one. Force of Will is no good. Seagate Restoration. Uh, that's going to cost us three life. But I guess that means we can cast the Khan for the win next turn, potentially. We can play a tap now, but obviously it won't untap because of Back to Basics. So I think we pass the turn here and then maybe deploy it next turn. Khan, activate Defense Grid Attack. It's a strategy. It could win. It's quite an intense game, this one. All right, they're fate-sealing us. All right, they're leaving it on top. They have to wonder what the card in our hand is. Maybe they're just assuming it's another Echo. It's coming at us or Narset. Uh, the Narset. Okay, that's good. That buys us a turn. Chromox. All right, that doesn't do it. All right, so we play this one. Pay three life. Cast the card. One, two, three, four. A counter spell or some other nonsense. I'll make this. Go to attacks. Attack them. Dress down. How does that interact with Defense Grid here? Oh, it lets him draw a card and cast a spell. Oh, geez. That was a real tough one. So that was a 2-3 finish in the end. And we really worked hard for that last one. I thought that last game was an interesting game and uh, probably the best bit of coverage in this entire league. So I hope you stuck around to which, watch that one. But let's talk about the deck. So 2-3, obviously not a great record. Now... There was definitely times where, as a complete novice's deck, I didn't necessarily know the optimal things to do. I did make one silly little mistake at one point uh, by using the Arcan and getting the not getting the Tormod's Crypt. I think that definitely could have cost us a round versus the land, so maybe we could have squeaked out 3-2. But what I will say about this deck, though, is... The ceiling is obviously very high. You could do some really broken stuff and just wheel your opponent's hand really early and stop them from ever getting to play the game. That's incredibly potent. But the floor in this deck is one of the worst floors of any deck, I think. So in terms of like what your worst hands do, we have so many cards that do nothing. Like So we had loads of games where we had like this sort of stuff. We had like Lion's Eye Diamonds and Moxes. So we had Moxes we couldn't cast. We had these Khans that we couldn't cast. Um, so we couldn't imprint them into the Mox. We couldn't cast the, the Khans because we didn't have the mana because you couldn't imprint anything in our Mox. You end up with like these Lion's Eye Diamonds that don't do anything because you need to have either the Khan or the Echo. Now sometimes you can activate a Narset and crack it in response and maybe cast something there. But that's a little bit riskier. Whereas like the Khan and the Echo are the obvious choices. But, yeah, so you kind of have these cards that don't do anything on their own quite often. And Khan being uncastable often was a real struggle. And all your wheel effects do nothing if you don't have the stuff to go with them. And quite often your opponent ends up gaining more out of them than you. Uh, like, if they're a control deck, they've been spending their resources two for one in themselves to keep you down. And any days undoing, they just gas back up. So you really do need your, your guy in place. And we only have one creature in the deck, which means if we are playing against a removal heavy deck, they're just going to kill it on site. And there's not much we can do about that. So, yeah, like the gotcha factor is very strong here sometimes. But as you saw, we had loads of hands where we just had like four or five cards in hand and several cards in play. But none of them did anything on the game state. They were just blank pieces of cardboard while our opponent beat us down or whatever. And that definitely felt pretty awkward. 
Our mana base is obviously complete garbage, right? Uh, that's the kind of nature of this deck. We've got Sapratan Scary and Ancient Tombs and stuff to power out Urza Saga. And you saw how devastating a couple of Wastelands was against us. It just strands all the spells in your hand that you're trying to cast. And it's awkward. Like, we're playing high risk, high reward, essentially, right? So the risky mana base to play our really explosive stuff. So we can go like Sapratan Scary on one, turn two, Narset, Lion God Diamond, Echo Vions, kill you, basically. That's what the deck is trying to accomplish, or with Hole Reacher, etc. But in order to do that, we have these lands that are very susceptible. So playing a common to play tap land that then gets wastelanded is brutal, and against back to basics, uh, not the best either, because they can just smash it. But against like really slow decks, we have we can sometimes have a time to sort of grind through a little bit, I guess. But then they can also have a time to build a perfect hand. Like that last game against Jeskar was very close. And post board, they had the back to basics, which is really strong against us as well. And they had a bunch of pyroblasts, so I think their post board matchup is better against us than we are against them. And we only have two chalice in this build, so we don't even have the big sort of stop your opponent interacting button as often as we would like it. So I guess what I am slightly concerned about is I don't really know where this deck fits in the meta, right? If you draw really well, I think this deck can be incredibly potent and you can smash people quite handily. I think the high, the, the sort of, the top percentage of hands of this deck are really hard for people to beat. Like, really hard to beat. But I don't think the average and bad hands, like the bad hands can't play magic, which is an issue. And the average hands are maybe like one or two pieces of disruption away from not playing magic, which feels pretty troublesome as a deck. Now, obviously this did win the Legacy Challenge Showcase, and it was obviously in the hands of someone who's much better at playing this deck than me. So they'll tell you more about this than I will. Uh, and they're obviously quite happy with it. I suppose if people are playing like that, sort of like the mid-rangey elf deck, that's not really gonna be interacting with what you're doing that much, that sort of deck you're probably gonna be reasonable against because you can kind of do your thing and not worry about them. But again, thought season and things exist and can really jam you up. I don't know, I just don't feel... I don't know what matchup I would be comfortable say, having this as my deck and being, oh yeah, this is the deck. This is the this is the matchup I win really easily. I'm not really sure what that looks like. Like mid-rangey... Uh, mid-rangey decks without Wasteland? I'm not sure how many of those there are. Um, yeah. It's a little bit awkward. Now, maybe we got a little bit unfortunate as well. We did have times where we just drew like all of our Khans uh, in a row when we couldn't cast them. We kept drawing Chrome Moxes when they wouldn't imprint anything, stuff like that, or just keep drawing into these lines like Diamonds and didn't do anything. But that is an inherent weakness with the deck. Now, if you get fortunate and don't sort of slip into the cracks of that weakness, then I think this deck is okay. But I think average percentage-wise, if you were to play this game a hundred times against every deck in the format, I think your, your overall match spread wouldn't be very good. That's my assumption here. But that doesn't mean that you can't play it. People obviously do, and people sometimes win tournaments with it. But I, I can't see why I would want to play this deck. It feels uh, very fragile to multiple things in the format. So counter spells, pretty good against us. Wastelands, pretty good against us. All the null rod, collector roof type jazz is really gonna jam us up too. And our combo that we pull off doesn't win us the game. Like if your opponent's committed a bunch of stuff to the board, well, I think we had a game like that where we could do our wheelie thing, strip all our opponent's cards, but they still kill us with like a 20, with their what they have on board. I think that was the lands play who could just go, oh yeah, I can just make my thing and kill you. And they even missed it for a turn, and that still wasn't good enough. So it just feels like this deck, ironically, spins its wheels too much. Uh, and you don't actually have that many payoffs if you are if you can't get your combo off soon, quick enough, and your opponent gets a little bit established or disrupts it a little bit, then what are you doing? Like, at least with Sneak and Show, your A plus B basically wins you the game. Now, this can win you the game in some matchups, to be fair. Like, a control matchup, if you get rid of all their hand, you can probably just say no to them and you win the game. But against some decks that come into the board or whatever, your A plus B isn't necessarily going to get you there. So we could do 
our big wheel thing against a like Delver deck, for example. But that might not be good enough if they've got like six power in play or more, which is not exactly difficult for them to do. Then how are we beating that? You have very little interaction outside of the Ottawaras and the Spellbomb. And now we did turtle up behind Ensnaring Bridge a bunch of times. So that's definitely something. But we're getting caught up in meltdowns and things. I don't know. Like, this is definitely not the deck for me personally either, which probably doesn't help. Clearly better players with this sort of deck are going to have a better time than me. But I don't think my assessment is wrong in terms of, like, where the floor of this deck sits. And I know having watched, like... Uh, Bosch and Roll and Thrave and You, who make great content that you should watch. Um, they have similar views in terms of the floor of this deck being quite low, in terms of risking having a lot of do-nothing experience when you're playing this deck, or having single pieces taken out so your deck doesn't do anything, or even doing your combo and it's still not being good enough to win. So, well done to Elf Kid for winning the Legacy Showcase Challenge with this. Uh, after having played this deck, I think his Victory is even more impressive, uh, is what I would say, because I I personally don't think this deck is great. But again, ceiling of its high. If you if you play it enough so you know all the tiniest margins, you can eke away at those percentage points and get, get up to the sort of the better hands. And at the end of the day, whatever deck you play in Legacy or in any Magic format, you're going to need a little bit of luck together whether that's finding the right matchups or not mulliganing into oblivion just to find a land stuff like that luck does play an important part in magic but then there's also play skill and clearly my play skill with this particular deck could obviously do with uh, a lot of improvement but i still stand by the things i've said about this list all right i think we're done now i hope you enjoyed this one remember to check out the patreon and my new article that's gone up on there it's in the description below and you can also join my discord for free and say hello and why not uh like comment and subscribe those three things don't cost you anything at all to do and they really help the channel out and if you want to go that extra mile why not share my content to places like reddit where i don't really go on myself and help me get some more views i'm trying to get up to 2,000 subscribers at the moment so if you can help with that that'd be wonderful all right thank you very much for watching and goodbye <laughs>